Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. This is Norman. It's Whiskey in the Van Wednesday, and today we're drinking 1792 Full Proof. Proof it. <laughs> This is a bottle that we've had on the shelf for a long time, 1792. Barton Distilling is one of our favorite distilleries. And in keeping with this week's theme, which is Jim Murray Whiskey Bible winners, apparently, <laughs> uh, if you go back to the video that released a couple of days ago, and we'll put a card somewhere for you to do that. I don't know how YouTube works, but we're gonna put a, a card so you can link to that video. <laughs> That's the 2021 winner for Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. This was the 2020 winner, literally beat all comers. So like him or not, he's a British guy that in the last two years has chosen a Canadian rye and an American bourbon above all other whiskeys in the entire world as his whiskeys of the year. So pretty interesting palette he's got. And uh, we haven't shared this one with you yet as far as tasting notes and our full thoughts on it so here we are we're gonna give that a shot really quickly 1792 distillery is currently owned by Sazerac company and one thing that Jim Murray said in the whiskey Bible that I thought was really interesting is on the evidence talking about the flavors of this bottle and how great it is Buffalo Trace has a threat to its world supremacy from a rival distillery that they own this is a whiskey of standout almost standalone beauty finding fault is not easy with something this intense and magnificently rich so if you weren't expecting something good, you should be. <laughs> and once again, obviously not in the van. Freezing out there, I'm not going out there. How's my nose gonna work correctly? It's just not gonna happen. We're inside because we can actually smell and taste these things inside. I don't drink mine. You just go right in? Yeah. Well, I went to put it to my nose and I splashed it up my nose. So I'm, <laughs> we're, we're both doing great. I'll say this for 1792, almost everything that I've had from them, I've loved. The only thing being my review a couple of weeks ago for 1792 aged 12 years, I didn't care for the sort of bitter oak on that one. I thought that the tannins sort of ruined the flavor on that one. All other 1792s that I've had, I've really enjoyed. And I happen to be sort of on a kick with this one right now. I hesitated to do a review of it mm -hmm. simply because we just did a 1792 review a couple of weeks ago, but I've been enjoying this so much that I, I really wanted to share it because this bottle at 125 proof, selling for $50, aged eight and a half plus years, even if this was only moderately tasty, it's still a solid value at that $50 price point. So let's get into the nose. We'll do some tasting notes and then we'll talk value and comparisons because this is just such an interesting bottle to me. Yeah, and I skipped ahead <laughs> just to drinking it just because I'm here, you know. Sure. On your Whiskey in the Van Wednesday. A lot of proof in that first sip, but if you just like sit with it for a second, super flavorful. Yeah. Like you just have to get through that initial proof. We've had some higher proof whiskeys and rise as of late. This drink's a little bit hotter initially sure. than those, but it's got good flavor. Yeah, that's the one thing that I would say about this particular whiskey. If it's your first high proof whiskey, beware. It's got some heat to it. Yeah, at 125 proof, it is not gentle. And, and there's not a lot of higher proof bottles that are super gentle. You'll get it on the nose, you'll get it on the palate, you'll get it on the finish, it builds. But I also think with a bourbon with that much proof on it, that's got that sort of heat. The beautiful thing about this bottle is it's also got a ton of flavor. So aroma wise, for me, the 1792 flavor profile on a bottle like this is so ramped up. Lovely oak from that eight and a half years plus in the barrel. You've got huge caramel notes or toffee notes. Mm -hmm. The bubble gum is there. The vanilla is there. I just love those notes. And if you like super loud, sort of spiky flavors, I don't usually, but in this one, I, yeah. I really do. This is a solid bourbon for you. And I'll say on the nose too, it's kind of like what I just said on the uh, palate. If you can just kind of ignore the proof because you do get a little bit of proof on the nose. Man, it's like a really wonderful sweetness that's like hiding, almost like uh, masking underneath, but like caramels, a little bit of a cherry or like a, a tartar fruit in there. But it's not like fresh cherries. It's almost like dried cherries. Yeah. Fruit. You know, this is a company that's now owned by the same parent company as Buffalo Trace. The cherries in this do not remind me at all of Buffalo mm -hmm. Trace cherry notes that you usually get. There's cinnamon. That's really one of the first things you get on the tongue here. Mm -hmm. The vanilla is back. That toffee, it's like huge, bright, biggest 
toffee you've ever had that doesn't really fit in your mouth. Think of like those mm -hmm. giant jawbreakers you used to get when you were a kid, <laughs> if it was just a giant toffee candy. I That's, like it. <laughs> I feel like I can't really get all the flavors yeah. because there's so much hitting my tongue at once. It's hot. There's proof. This does have a lot of proof. So it's a it's a different drink for me, but I will say that the flavor profile is really nice. Mm -hmm. A lot of the vanilla caramels, that toppy that you're talking about, yeah. the nose is opening up now more that I've had a couple sips. And this is a bottle that, by the way, off the neck, I liked it. Mm -hmm. But as we're drinking it down, it's gotten better and better. It really, at the halfway point, is when I think it became one of my favorite sippers. The more oxygen gets in there, the longer this bottle has been opened, I think the better it gets. It's an interesting bottle that way. It's a little bit of a lingerer too for me. It's like I can I'm not gonna say like that rye spice that you could you sometimes talk about, but mm -hmm. there's just a little bit of a tingle left on the tongue from this one. This is a higher rye mash bill, being about 15% rye yeah. as I understand it. So that's yeah. a great note. It's not overly spicy still. The one note that I'm getting throughout and the more that I sip on this is that pink mm. bubble gum that sometimes is really mm. prevalent mm -hmm. on a 1792 distilling bottle. It's a little bit of a backseat here compared to everything else that's happening. The oak, the caramel, toffee, vanilla, you know, the wood really comes through in this bottle, but still sweet and lively, yeah. almost refreshing. Would you not say refreshing? <laughs> For me, it's not something I would, you know, just grab off the shelf and just start drinking because there is a little bit of that proof up front. Um, it's not as easy going as things that I like to drink, right? But I do really enjoy the flavor profile. For me, this is a in the mood kind of a drink. It's not an everyday drinker. That's actually a great note. Depending on your palate, if you really like traditional bourbon flavors, you may not really be hugely keen on this. And, and what you said is exactly right. It is unique, right. in my opinion, sort of exciting that way. There's a lot of bourbons out there that don't have traditional bourbon flavors that I don't really care for. Yeah. Spiky, sort of peanutty, overly oaky, and anything that maybe mm -hmm. is tannic and even the, the smallest way, I really react to sort of negatively right off the bat. But this one, the flavor profile, something about it just hits me. Mm -hmm. I know it's not for everybody. If it's your first high proof bottle, probably wouldn't go with this one. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> and now I think it's important that we talk about the value of this bottle. Mm -hmm. For 50 bucks, a full proof, talking 125 proof bottle, that's pretty rare for such a high proof bottle. There's not a ton in that space. For that $50 price point comparison, Larceny is $50, it's a weeded bourbon. In my opinion, not the biggest weeded bourbon guy. I happen to like that a lot. I would take this over the Larceny. Yeah, I, I think mean, I would too. I was surprised. Stag, super hard to find. I wouldn't even include it in this comparison. Wild Turkey Rare Breed, which just had a price drop to $40 here in Oregon. That's bonkers for 116 proof. <laughs> That was an exciting day. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. As a starter high proof product, and that one's barrel proof, that might be the way to go. But there's not a ton of competition in the $50 range for something that's this high proof. This isn't one that I would grab off the shelf. Mm -hmm just because the flavor profile is a little bit off from what I like, but I, you do love this one. But even for me, I think that $50 price point seems about right. Yeah. There's a lot of really great flavors that once I cut through that proof, I really enjoyed this. And I feel like in the past I've had this and have not enjoyed it. So make a progress. <laughs> yeah, the flavors on this, the flavors are just ramped up. So 1792, they've got their small batch bourbon, which is a lower proof. They have their single barrel bourbon, which mm -hmm. is 90 ish proof depending on the single barrel. They've got their bottled and bond product which is 100 proof and this one which is 125 proof. If that flavor profile of toffee, vanilla, mm -hmm. caramel, oak, a little bit of bubble gum, if that sounds good to you, the single barrel and the bottled and bond, they're both $40 here in Oregon. We love those. We think they're stellar. But if that flavor profile sounds good, that might be a better place to start, especially if you're not fully acquainted with high proof whiskeys at the moment. And on a non-flavor profile note, I really dig their <laughs> bottles. It just feels fancy. It feels like something that you would have seen in your like grandparents' house at some point. Oh, not I'm, my grandparents. I'm making, it's just like old school fancy, like the gold yeah. top. I like the way the bottle is shaped. I was just looking back here. It's just different than everything else that you find. And it's, it just feels a little like high class. Just to summarize, Jim Murray calls this whiskey of the year for the year 2020. It's really, really, really good. I don't know that I, it would be anywhere near the absolute top of my list, but I like it 
well enough yeah. that it has a place on this shelf. For yeah. 50 bucks, what an easy purchase at the liquor store. When this thing's empty, yeah, I'm definitely getting another one. I really, really like it. There's yeah. been a bunch of bottles where like, we don't need to get this one again. Oh, so, always, I mean, always. Just that note alone, that says something. Yeah, so if you live in an area where your grocery store sells liquor, you know, add it to the shopping list. Just pop it on there, no big deal. We really like this bottle. We think it's a great value at the $50 price point. Yeah. Let us know what you think. What's your favorite 1792 expression? Have you had this bottle? Do you like this bottle? Let us know in the comments. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss a video from us. You get a little notification. If you wear a little watch like this, it vibrates while you release <laughs> a video and you go, look at that. And you'll know oh, immediately. Oh, the Perfect Man. Be the Can't first wait to watch that. Exactly. Yeah, the first person <laughs> to know. You'll be riding your bike. <laughs> there it is. You'll know. And then don't, don't, don't ride into something. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you to all the subscribers and commenters and likers from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers.